Seems like it's working. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good to see a smiling face. Welcome to Kaladai Community Church. You are here, not by chance, but by the design of God. Isn't that good? You know, Britain, this week, last few days, we've been through a storm. Catherine? Catherine? Catherine. 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 Goodness me. Why, why can't they say just Kate? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, we've been through a storm, you know, and uh, as a postman, they, we had a lot of warning. Be careful, be careful, everybody said. And a lot of yellow warnings, number warning, whatever it comes up. You know, God talked to me, spoke to me something. Even a storm has got purpose. Yeah. You know, God said, even something you don't like happening, there's a great purpose for God. Then, you know, he showed me the illustration of trees. Because I was hearing the wind going through the trees and making a that kind of sound. Yeah? And oh, pe people get scared, in they, little kids and all? But God said, don't be scared. That's trees rejoicing. Because through the wind and the storm, their seed will be scattered into the new place to make new growth. You see, we have a storm in our lives. And we don't like it. But if you look at, the, look at it with a different perspective, you'll find God's blessing in it and his purpose. So thank you, Lord God. Everything you allow to happen, there's a purpose. And even the bad things, bad situations, hard times, we believe you can make it into good. So we thank you, Lord, and praise you, Lord. And we declare here, you are the Lord God Almighty. You are the Lord. In Jesus' name. So this, because of this, your goodness, we come here to praise your name. So let's stand up and praise his name.
Yes, praise you, Lord God. Good, isn't it? God is good, isn't it? You know, I always say this God is good because our faith is based on this. And even more, He is the Lord, God Almighty, greatest. And there is no other. Awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Lord. Lord, please help me today to bring in the word. Word of truth. The truth that set people free. And the truth to give us a joy. The truth to help us to know you more and more and more every day. Good. Yes, thank you, Lord. Isn't it good? Everybody all right? Yeah. You know, I bring a good news. Yes, you see, I'm a bearer of good news as you are. Yes? When you bring the news, the message of Jesus Christ, it's always a good news. That's why it's called the gospel, the good news. Good. See, you should keep your smile on your face when you bring the message of God, even so hard for some people. It's a pleasure to bring hard hitting message. Well, today's verse, the scripture is 2 Corinthians, verse 12, sorry, chapter 12, verse 9. 2 Corinthians, chapter 12, verse 9. Everybody's favorite. Okay? It says, my grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. My grace is sufficient for you, for my power is made perfect in weakness. Probably you can guess. I'm going to talk about grace today. So, you know, I prayed this morning, God, please give me grace to preach about the grace so that people you know about the grace so that they can be in grace grace. You know what? Grace is one of the great, greatest things in Christian life. But uh, there are some mix-up regarding the grace, understanding of grace. So I'm going to straighten up today and hope this will help you to get to know Jesus. Okay, first of all, mercy and grace. You know, when I became a Christian, it was a little confusing. People were talking about mercy, grace of God. Have you, have, you, have you experienced that? I didn't understand that distinction between them. You know, both talks about God's, uh, God's goodness there. Yeah? But mercy and grace are distinctly different. So I'm going to make it clarified first. I tell you what. As I said, both are to do with God's goodness towards us. You know, because of God's goodness, the mercy is God withholds from us what we deserve. That's what the mercy. Because of his goodness, he withholds what we deserve. I explain. You know, by our fallen nature and the action, the fallen action, the through our human weakness, we deserve the wrath of God the punitive judgment. But because of his goodness, he decided, or he decides not to pour, pour out his wrath and judgment on us. That's what mercy is. He's withholding what we deserve as a human beings, the falling, weak, falling human beings. That's mercy. So how about the grace? Grace is like this. Because of God's goodness, he gives us what we don't deserve. You know, while nothing we have done that makes us deserving or worthy to receive God's favor or goodness, but he decides to pour out into us and over us his goodness. That's the difference between mercy and grace. So now it's clear. That's only the beginning. 
you know, the grace is a word used in the Christian world slightly differently from the secular grace, isn't it? So God's grace, what is God's grace? Well, you know me, I like etymology. They, you know, looking at the origin of the word. So I looked at the Bible, and the grace, word definition in Greek is, the Greek word for the grace is charis. Yeah? It means that favor, or favorable towards, or disposed towards, or inclined, or leaning towards to share benefit. That's a Greek word, charis, a charis means. How about in Hebrew? The Hebrew word for grace is kana, and it derives from the word kana, means to show favor or be gracious, or inclined, or to be favorably inclined. So both of them can say meanings, but well, that's why we translate it grace. But something to do with God's favor, poured out, extended to us because he wants to. You see, the both Greek and Hebrew words and grace refers to God's freely extend himself or extending his favor, reaching or incline to people because he disposed to bless or be near them. I'm going to simplify that word because I took that one from a dictionary, the Christian dictionary. But actually what it says, what it's saying is grace is the manifestation of God's love, manifestation of God's love and goodness and his desire to bless and help us that he reaches out to us and pour out his goodness by giving his favor, blessing, and his presence. Grace is something that God pours out to us because he wants us, and which is good. Do you remember what I said at the beginning? God is good. Bible tells us all the good things come from the heaven above, from God. That's why it is. And then, you know, greatest grace that God poured out is, of course, saving grace in Jesus Christ. Salvation in Jesus Christ. You know, before Christ, we were born in sin. And we were guilty of breaking God's holy law, you know, God's standard. God's value. And we were enemies to, of God and we deserve to die. We were unrighteous and without means of justifying ourselves. And spiritually, we were destitute, blind, unclean, and dead, and our souls were in peril of everlasting punishment. That's where we used to be, and some people are still in there. But then God decided, God decided to pour out his grace. He was extending his favor to humankind. You know, we deserve to perish, as I said. But because God loved us so much and could not let us perish and the sin, that's what John 3, verse 16 is all about. John 3, 16. God loved, so loved the world. Yeah. So he knew we could not do anything about it by our own effort. He really knew that. So he decided to give us the solution in Jesus Christ. He gave us what we did not deserve. But... He wanted to save us. And all done by Jesus Christ alone. None of it is our works. That's the greatest grace God poured out. So when you are Christian, you receive that. You know, this is a saving grace. It was impossible for us to save ourselves. So God did it through Jesus Christ and him alone. Because he loved us and desired to save us. This is the greatest grace the Bible talks a lot about. 
But do you know? The saving grace is only the beginning of the series of God's grace pouring into our lives as a Christian. This is the exciting part. Not just the one grace, but God pours out the grace every day. And this is what we can experience as a Christian. John 1 verse 16 said, For out of his fullness we have all received grace upon grace. Upon grace, upon grace, upon grace. If you're goldfish going around the fish, goldfish bowl, say, oh, grace. Mm, oh, grace. Mm, oh, great. Well, anyway, all the other verse. Anyway, well, though our standing that the relationship with God has been totally restored in Christ Jesus through his saving grace, our humanness while living in this world has not been totally submitted to his lordship. You understand. We stumble and fall, don't we? Yes? And he said, I'm supposed to be a new creation. I'm supposed to be the receiver of grace. But I, we, I still do something wrong, which I don't want to do. And don't do the things I, don't want, I should do. That's our humanness in this world. Yet, we fall and stumble, but we still desire, don't we? to submit ourselves, ourselves to him totally. It's our desire there. God put that desire in us, and that's very important. See, it is our human weakness, the fleshly nature, that consistently battle against the spirit. The Galatians 5 verse 17 tells us about that. And also Jesus said to disciples, spirit is willing, but the flesh is weak. So he understands. Sometimes we don't understand he understands things, don't we? Yeah, but he understands everything. And he knows our human weakness. That's why he sent Jesus Christ to save us. You know, that's why the Bible keeps telling us to live by the Spirit and work out your salvation life. You know, God fully understands our weakness and humanness. That's why he has sent us the Holy Spirit to teach, guide, and strengthen us to walk our saved life according to the way of Jesus so that we will become like him and be one with him. He gives us grace through the power of the Holy Spirit to be one with him so that our life, the actions we take to be aligned with our standing with God, our rightful position, the children of God, co-heir with Christ, the saved ones, the new creations. You know, this is what the 1 Peter 15 talks about. Be holy in everything you do because God is holy. I talked about it a few weeks ago, yeah? Okay. See, this is God's grace for our Christian walk after the saving grace. It is his desire and the purpose for us to be like him. And, but he knows our human weakness that we cannot attain it fully by our own effort. So that he decided, again, God decided to give us help through the Holy Spirit. Thus, God says, in our weakness, his power, the grace, is made perfect. So that's grace we're talking about. His desire to part, his goodness to help us for the things we cannot do. Well, this grace, great, isn't it? Brilliant, you know? I'm so glad. God decided to pour out his grace, his goodness to us, because we need help. You know, I've been existing in this world for more than 50 years. You know, it's a half century, that is. But I realized, you know, I could not live by myself. I needed everybody's help. I'm made alive by people around me, even, you know. Of course, with, by God as well, but, you know, 
When I was a child, when I was a baby, I couldn't feed myself, couldn't I? I had help from my parents. When I'm in school, I had help from my friends and teachers, my neighbors and all those people. Now, I got help from all you guys. Yeah, I appreciate that, you know. But we all that, like that, don't we? We are made alive by people, and most of all, made alive by God. Well, this grace, amazing things. But there are a couple of misunderstanding, uh, misunderstandings regarding this grace in Christianity. I witness, I personally witnessed and heard. So I'm going to straighten this up. One, misunderstanding about the grace. One, under grace, not under the law. Romans 6 verse 14 says, You are not under the law, but under grace. This scripture is often quoted out of context. You know, some people interpret this scripture and says, I am under grace. Therefore, I am above the law, that the rules of the law does not apply to me. So I decide what is right for me, because I am under grace, above the law. Have you heard someone say that? Have you? I've heard, oh yes, I can do whatever I want because I'm in grace. Well, this is not what Paul is talking about when you read the scripture. What he is talking about that by trying to attain God's approval and justification by fulfilling the law with human effort will inevitably fail. That's what he's saying. And even more, that our sin by breaking the law will be illuminated, in, to shine brighter, yeah? illuminated through that action. You know, that's what the law is designed to do. That's what Paul says in Romans. You know, that law here represents human effort, the human works to attain God's approval, justification, which is impossible to do through the law. Galatians 2, verse 16. But Christ brought a total fulfillment of the law in him for us, not for himself, for us. And that is grace in which we abide. We abide in his righteousness. That gives us God's approval. That's what the Bible calls it, justification by faith. We believe in Jesus Christ did it for us, and I'm in him. Thus, we are under grace in God's sight. Yes, God sees Jesus' work surrounding us. That's what the grace is. That's what under the grace means. It does not mean we disregard the law, as the law itself is holy, righteous, and good. Romans 7 verse 12. And we do not nullify the law, but uphold it. Romans 3 verse 31. This is a New Testament attitude towards the law. Okay? Paul tells us, Holy Spirit is telling us through Paul that law is not a bad thing. Law itself is holy. We just cannot fulfill it in our human weakness. And if we still sin willingly, as I decide to disregard grace, then we become or making ourselves slaves to the law again. Romans 6. Please read Romans 6. It is really good. The scripture does not say that we are above the law either. But it says we are no longer under the supervision of the law. Galatians 3, verse 25. Everything I'm saying is a scripture. Okay? Even though our own human effort cannot keep us from falling, we keep the desire to live righteously and being humble, to know our need for the grace, to stay close in 
Christ's righteousness and not to sin anymore. That's living under the grace. Do you remember I said earlier, our desire to live holy as a holy people, that's important. Therefore, under grace and not under the law does not mean we can do whatever we want regarding to the righteousness, as some people say. Under grace does not mean that you sin and get away with it because the law does not apply to you. That's not what the Bible is saying. Confusing? Difficult? I make it, I, I give you an illustration, make it quite simple. Imagine you're standing in the rain. Yes. Like February, yeah? Last February, standing in the rain. And you're trying to stay dry with holding a tiny little li leaf above your head. It's your own, uh, own effort. Fig leaves, if you want to. You still get wet, don't you? That's human effort. But God decided, oh, poor guy, I love you. I give you a huge umbrella. That's his grace. And we hold that, stay under the grace, you stay dry. But imagine that you hold in the grace, under grace, but you decided to stay out there. Like this. You still get wet. That's what it's like. Under the grace, not under the law. But if you step out of it, you still get wet. That's first misunderstanding corrected, hopefully. The second misunderstanding about the grace is this. Romans 5, verse 20, it says, But where sin increased, grace increased all the more. Another scripture taken out of context. You know, some people use this scripture to say, well, my lifestyle I like increases God's grace to be poured out. So I will keep on sinning so that his grace shine even brighter. So don't criticize my lifestyle. I live how I like. But that, uh, that way that God's grace will be shining brighter for people to see. See, I'm glorifying God with my sinful lifestyle. Oh, yeah, I've heard people saying that. You know, Paul says in the next line, by no means, black it, don't do it. You know, God's grace shines perfectly from the beginning. Did you know that? Because it's his goodness and favor poured out. You know, it's like his love. He gave us his love at the beginning with perfect love. You cannot increase his love or improve his love by your behavior and anything. It's perfect from the beginning. And his goodness, the grace, is perfect from the beginning. Just like the light appears to be shining bright in the darkness. Have you had the torch shining in a lovely summer day? Doesn't look that bright, isn't it? But a gloomy winter night, the light looks brighter. Grace is like that. God's grace shines and appears brighter when you receive the grace when you're sinning. That's what he meant. Sin increased appearance of God's grace. That's what it is. So, do not sin thinking you're glorifying God. No. You see, Sinful actions does not glorify God at all in any way. Okay, I straighten up a couple of things. Well, another thing about the grace, do you know grace, to receive grace, there are conditions. <gasps> I thought that was free. God give us everything free. No. I tell you what, most of the things God gives us, there are conditions. Only two things I can think of that are totally free. That's God's love and his mercy. God gives us unconditionally. But grace, 
there are two main conditions for the grace to be poured out to us. Condition one, humility. P- 1 Peter 5, verse 5 to 6. It's quoting the Proverbs 3, verse 34. It's also in James 4, verse 6. It says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Therefore, humble yourself under the mighty hand of God, that he may exalt you in due time. See, this humility is about recognizing and acknowledging our inability and the need for his grace. It is our reliance on God and not on our human effort. That's what this humility is about. You know, there is no grace poured out to people of self-making. You know, self-making man saying, I can do whatever. Oh, sorry, I can do all things by myself. I can fix it. You know, Bob the Builder doesn't have grace of God. <laughs> yeah? That kind of attitude won't, you know, won't let the grace come. Because you are basically saying, I don't need you, God. I can do it. So it makes sense, doesn't it? So also humility here is not about saying, oh, I am nothing. I don't have any skills. I am not educated. I cannot do this. I'm not confident. Oh, I can't possibly do that. Many people say that, don't they? We do because we are scared, no confidence, whatever. And that's not the humility towards God to receive grace. It is a showing. You are showing appearance, appearance, appearance of a humbleness. But you know what it is? Actually, self-pity. When you say that to people, oh, I can't possibly do it because I'm nothing, I'm nobody. Look. And then, do you know what they want me to say? Oh, dear, dear, you are not the nothing. You know, oh, you got such a great thing in you. That's what they expect to, you know. I tell you what, what I've ex- um, witnessed over the, some years of Christian life those people who are in God's grace, operating in God's grace, they are so confident. You know, they have this confidence that the knowing that God's power and goodness working through them. Despite of their abilities. You know, true humility to receive grace is a humility towards God, not towards people. You don't have to say that to people. I cannot do it. You say to God, Lord, I can't do this. But I know if you help me, I can. That's the humility towards God. So you can be standing like this in front of people like me now. With a smile on your face, looking confident. I can do all things through Christ Jesus who strengthened me. That is a true humility. And also one thing, this grace, we have to remember, we ask and request God for the grace. We do not demand it. We cannot say, God, give me your grace because I'm humbling myself to you. You have to give me your grace. You know, God doesn't have to give you anything. You know, We have to realize God is not our servant. God is our Lord and Master. We are his servant. I illustrate something. Tithing. I believe everybody tithes to the kingdom of God, to your family. If you don't, you are disobeying God. It's not my word. Deuteronomy 28 to 30, you should read. But anyway, some people said tithing. You know, some people tithe to get prosperity from God. Yeah? He said, I tithe so God prosper me. They quote the verse from Malachi. Said, God says, test me on this, the tithes and how I bless you. They said, hey, that's what in the scripture. So, God has to prosper me because I'm tithing. Uh-uh. 
He doesn't have to. You know, we tithe because that's what God told us to do. We tithe because we want to be obedient to God. Do you know, personally, I do not seek a return from God by obeying Him in this matter. I tithe. I just want to be obedient to God. However, because God is good, so love us. So when you tithe, God blesses us. That's his decision. He decides to bless us because of our obedience. But we must not demand his grace because we humble ourselves. Great thing is God is good, so he gives us a grace when we humble ourselves. It's a good deal, don't you think? But our attitude is, that's important. You know, Ephesians 4 verse 7 says, grace is a gift from God. It says that, but grace was given to each one of us according to the measure of Christ's gift. It's a gift from, you don't demand your family at the Christmas, say, give me. Christmas present because I'm your family. You don't do that, do you? <gasps> well, then the wrath of a wife is coming. No. No, we don't demand gift. It's a gift. Graciously receive. So that's first condition, the humility. It just say, God, well, what you call me to do, I think too big. I don't think I can do it by myself. And you know that. So I trust you to help me. Because that's your purpose. That's the second condition. The grace is given to us for fulfilling God's purpose. You know, some way, uh, some may think God's grace is given to us for everything in our lives that we cannot do. You know, it isn't. God's grace is given to us to fulfill his will and purpose. You know, God's grace is not there to make our every wishes come true. Mm-hmm. It's a song there. Every wish should come true. I don't know. Grace will not be given to us for our selfish ambitions. God, I cannot become a millionaire. So give me a grace to become a millionaire. Maybe God doesn't want you to be a millionaire. Well, if it's your purpose, then he will. It's like that. See, it is specifically to fulfill his will and purpose. For example, salvation, that's his will. The maturing in Christ, the conforming to his likeness, obeying his command and calls and kingdom works, all those things are his purpose, isn't it? That's why God gives us grace. This is about submission to the lordship of Jesus Christ. We are, not, we are to submit ourselves well to his will. Just as Jesus, Jesus did in the garden of Gethsemane. Not my will, but your will be done. Then God's grace is given to us to fulfill that. And he may exalt you in due time. That's what scripture says. These are the two conditions, the main conditions about the receiving grace. Humility, true humility, and submission to God's purpose. Well, I'm going to close now. God's grace is God's goodness and favor given to us. When we desire to do what he wants us to do, but we cannot do it with our own effort. Grace is in our inability, in our inability, with our humanness, when we try to fulfill, fulfill his will and purpose, there God power working in us, through us, and on behalf of us, through his spirit, to accomplish his will and purpose. Through the true humility 
and submission to God, he pours out his goodness and favor onto us to help us. You know, it is all because God loves us and desires to bless us and to help us with his goodness. And this is the grace of God. You know, it is a manifestation of his goodness and his love towards us. That's what the grace is all about. It's not the magic portion for your ministry to grow. It's not your magic portion or magic spell. As some people think, oh, I want the grace, I want the grace. We should ask for the grace. Yes, we should ask for the grace because we want his grace, that his goodness and his love fill our, our lives, don't we? In his presence. That's his grace as well. You know, we need a grace. It's a base, the foundation of our Christian lives. That his goodness and his love working in us and through us. The for that reason we ask God, God give me grace. So that we can accomplish everything you want on this earth through us. So that your name will be glorified. And that's what the grace is for. And this is the truth about the grace. So next time you go into your prayer room, ask God, God, I want your goodness and love manifest through us. I want your grace fill my life. Thank you, Lord. God, I thank you, Lord. From the beginning, you pour out your grace to us. In Christ Jesus, that grace manifested perfectly. And Lord, we're thankful for that. I know you don't have to do it, but we, we are so thankful you decided, decides and wants to, actually desires to pour out your goodness to us, to help us, our walk in Christ Jesus, so that we become one with you. So we thank you, Lord, and praise you, Lord God. I pray those people who are struggling with the faith, the struggling to walk the saved life, I know you pour out your grace when they cry out. God, I thank you, Lord. You desire to pour the grace to those people who don't know you. Your saving grace is already poured out. I pray that your Holy Spirit will open their eyes so they can have a grace of God, your goodness and love in their lives. So, Father God, I thank you. And those people who are watching who don't know Jesus Christ, now you know he wants to help. He wants to pour out his goodness and love to you. All you have to do is ask and believe and receive him. Invite him into your life. It's all up to you. Well, thank you, God. And bless you, everybody. I, I will give you my, I, I'll give you my grace <laughs> to those who are nice to me. But uh, you know, God is much better than that. So I hope you have a good week this week and something good is going to happen to you that you will experience tangibly God's goodness and love to you. Yeah.